Having over 2,200 years of history, Guangzhou is no stranger to change. This fast developing city has new buildings popping up each and every day. Along with its economic rise, it's still been able to retain its deep cultural traditions, such as the local language of Cantonese and its strong spirit of sports. This unique dynamic city is a must-see when you come here to China. This is Travelogue, my name is Chelsea, and welcome to Guangzhou! Every time I come to a new city, I seek out the highest and best scenic views overlooking the place. Here at the Guangzhou TV Tower is definitely the bird's eye view. So you can see, it's still under construction, but by the time this episode is broadcast, it'll be open to the public. It's 88 stories tall, and if you don't think that's high enough, then I dare you to take a walk on the wild side. The new Guangzhou TV Tower rises way above the clouds. It can be seen from every part of the city. Its unique design, which resembles the shape of a woman, has earned it the Chinese nickname Xiao Man Yao. From close up, it's not so obvious, but from far away, the tower takes the figure of a tall, slim lady. Guangzhou is a massive city, and traveling from one side of the city to the other might take you several hours, depending on the traffic. So it's good advice to first plan out your attack before setting off for the sights. We travel far into the Panyu area and arrive at our destination of the Baomo Garden. There's another famous place just a couple steps away called the Nanyu Garden. Don't worry, I know you want to see it all. There's a special one ticket price to see both at 75 kwai per ticket. The Baomo Garden was built at the end of the Qing Dynasty with an area of 2,000 square meters. It was destroyed in the 1950s and rebuilt in 1995. Today, the garden covers 100,000 square meters. A close look at the rooftops reveals some slight differences. Typically, rooftops in the north run down at a straight 45 degree slope and are usually bland in color. However, in the south, rooftops are curved and very colorful. The architectural differences are closely related to the weather. In the south, the climate is wet and hot, so the rooftops are high, designed to shield against rain and heat. In the north, the temperature is dry and cold, so the rooftops are low and steep to ward off high winds. As you enter the Baomo Garden, you notice that everything is really delicately decorated. From the tiles you're walking on, to the stones, the trees, and even the rails while you're overlooking the water. Even though Baomo Garden is some distance from the city center, it's well worth the trip to escape the fast pace of the city. The only sounds you'll be hearing in the garden will be the fish swimming in the pond, the wind brushing against the trees, and the soft lull of local music. A perfect place to think and soak up Cantonese culture. By just looking at the red and gold colors of this huge gate, you can tell it's not just an ordinary gate. You guessed it right. Besides the old style of Cantonese architecture, here at the Baomo Garden, we also have the royal family style of architecture that you might have seen in Beijing. Here is a great place to learn about old traditional Chinese garden architecture. <laughs> gates at the front of the yard not only represented the family name, but also their status. The colors and height of the gates for royalty were different to those of normal citizens. And certainly, common folk were forbidden to enter the yards of royal family. Of course, these rules only applied in ancient times. Along with its great buildings and natural scenery, Baomo Garden also offers great restaurants serving up dishes such as Sha Wan Ginger Milk, 
zini fresh skin dumplings, and li wan boat porridge. The local ingredients sound delicious, but we'll have to find out exactly what these taste like. Huh? When you come to Guangzhou, it'd be a waste not to taste the famous local cuisine here. Even though food is number one, you can see that the environment is still really important. Today I have the special honor and privilege of going into a private room where I'm going to finally get to taste authentic Cantonese food. Mmm, let's go eat. In general, the Guangzhou cuisine is really light, and the Cantonese cooks here use a wide variety of fruits, vegetables, and meat from the Guangzhou surrounding area. And the cooks here are always mixing and inventing and creating new style of dishes with new interesting flavors. And even for the most experienced food lover, Guangzhou will be sure to satisfy your needs. Guangzhou is a huge city and the quickest and easiest way to get around is the subway. Hey, it's also environmentally sound. Today I'm super excited because today is the day of fun. Arriving at the Hansi Chenglong subway station, there are free buses to take you directly to Guangzhou's best amusement area, the Chaimlong Resort. You can choose from the Chaimlong Paradise, the water park, or the safari park. Being a huge roller coaster fan, I demanded we go to the amusement park first, which boasts world record holding roller coasters. All right, here we are. We're about to go on the first ride. This is called the Tenet Virgin Roller Coaster. Remember, when you get on the roller coaster, you have to take everything off. Nothing can go up there because it's not safe. Remember, safety first. Oh, the hat's got to come off. How's my hair look? Is it all right? Woo! To the moon, baby! Here we are live at the Chimelong Paradise Tenet Inversion Roller Coaster. From the front seat, we're going up. Ah, no problem. Whoa! I shouldn't have came on this ride! This roller coaster is called the Tan Inversion Roller Coaster. Inversion simply means loops. The Tan Inversion Coaster has the most loops in the world. This wild ride takes a total of just under two minutes and will whip and throw you around every high gravity turn. Small two, small one two, small one three. I don't know why they're screaming. A lot of green environments around us. Nice small guy. Exciting. It's fun. You want to go again? Go again? No, 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 no. Oh. Uh, well, it's a little faster than I thought it'd be. I'm fine, no problem. We're going to pick up our bags and uh, get ready, men to prepare for the next roller coaster. It's a good idea between roller coaster rides to take a break and enjoy the other small rides and games available at the park. If you don't take a break, you might find yourself feeling a bit queasy. Better keep some stamina for the other coasters and rides. Remember, we hope you will get to experience as many rides as you can during the day. Whoa! The dive coaster! The highest free fall coaster in the world! Oh, it looks scary. We want to get a reminder that once you're in the park, whoa! You only need one ticket and you can go on any ride. So I'm not scared of waiting in lines. All right, here we are on the second ride. I'm excited. It's just like the last one. Oh, buckle in. 
And you know, you might think, why am I sitting on the left side? Well, it's because they told me that on this ride especially, because the angle and the, the force of gravity along the turns is, is the highest if you're on the sides, the left or the right. Remember, front seat, left and right. They also said in the information packet, when you're up there so high, it's going to be like you're soaring over the air like a flying eagle. So like a bird, I'm ready to sp spread my wings. It's about 80 meters up the top. How are you doing down there? Like I said, we're going to experience what it feels like to be a bird up here today. It's great, hey? The dive coaster is one of the scariest, fastest coasters I've ever been on. The scariest point is the drop at the beginning when you're hanging, just sitting there looking down. Yet the thrills don't stop there. On the second loop, you drop down into a cave, which feels just as if you're heading straight for the ground. And at that point, I saw my life flash before my eyes. After riding two roller coasters in a row, I really need to take a break and sit down. Luckily, there's a perfect spot where I could just sit and be entertained. wondered what it would like to be like on a live Hollywood action movie set. Chime Lone Paradise has the ultimate live action performance, which literally puts the viewer in courtside seats. Just as long as you're willing to get afraid, get wet, and get hot from the explosions. Live fight sequences, explosions, drama, water, fire, and good versus evil. These elements put together what I'd like to say as one of the best live performances in all of China. The theater performance takes place outdoors where the crowd is in a horseshoe seating arrangement. No need to worry about rushing to the middle because the action is non-stop on every side. The shows run twice a day and you may be wondering, how much does this high quality show cost? Absolutely free, as it's included in your ticket to get into Chime Long Paradise. At the Chimlong Resort, we venture into the safari park where there are a large assortment of animals from around the world. Entering the park, tourists can choose to drive their own car, rent an electronic go-kart, or take the train car to get up close with the animals. That's... that's... Don't, please don't step <laughs> on my camera. Hey! Oh! Oh! He said my hand's too salty. You can't leave the car because one, it's not safe, and two, it's it's rough. Outside the road, it's rough, and you know, you're scared that you might twist your ankle or maybe get stumbled upon by a big elephant. 哦，对，我问你，就是那哪个时间最好？就是动物最早一晚，一早一晚，但是这不开门嘛，晚上不开门嘛。晚上不开，但是你傍晚的时候啊。This is the closest I've ever been to a real bear. I don't think they understand it. I think a bear can jump across that pretty easily. 
Hope it won't be today. Hi, Bear. <laughs> Hi, Bear. Don't eat me. The animals are enclosed by a deep moat, which makes it impossible for them to jump across. I asked whether in the past the animals have tried to leap over to escape, and the park attendant said no, because the animals are smart and realize there is no way to escape. I got the privilege of seeing the tigers and lions being fed. <laughs> the sound of their gigantic teeth effortlessly chomping down on the meat sent shivers down my back. Seeing the lions and tigers up close, I realized why these 500 pound plus cats rule the wild. <laughs> Get spiders of all types of animals from around the world. You name it, they've got it. It's also a special type. <laughs> It's the opportunity to be brave tiger. and pet a white tiger. Well, at least hug and cuddle as you can take pictures with a baby white tiger for free. It's just like hugging a big cat. What lives down under, in trees, has long claws and eats eucalyptus leaves. Who would have thought? They even brought in koala bears to the zoo here in Guangzhou. There's only two places in China you can see koalas. One in Taiwan and two here at the Changlong Zoo in Guangzhou. Here behind me, these koalas are special. They're the only koala twins in the whole world. Please meet Amanda and Michelle. There's only one animal left to make our Changlong Safari Park complete, and that's the famous panda. During zoo opening hours, the pandas comfortably play in their air-conditioned indoor venue. And after opening hours, when the weather cools down, they're allowed to roam freely in the outdoor playground. I asked the caretaker, how does she tell them apart from one another? She said they have different personalities. One may be more playful, and the other more aggressive, etc., etc. And she added, there are distinct differences in their fur color and patches. is the largest in Asia and ranks among the world's top five water parks. I took the time to go down some of the water slides and take a short swim. It's best to choose a sunny day to fully enjoy all 200,000 square meters of this gigantic water park. After my quick swim, I still had time to take in one of the most impressive circumstances I've ever seen. Chimelong has 
brought Las Vegas style entertainment to Guangzhou. A whirlwind of beautiful dancers, safari animals, fireworks, and high flying acrobatics will keep you clapping non stop through the two hour performance. There is something for everyone here, so when you come on vacation, bring your friends and family for a guaranteed great time. Performances run every night, and tickets are a mere 90 kwai RMB. There's lots of activities and fun happening from morning to night, and if you can't pack it in one day, no problem, because there's a great hotel on site. Located in the northeast part of downtown Guangzhou is the most beautiful mountain of Guangzhou, the Baiyun Shan, White Cloud Mountain. There's three ways up to the top, one sky cable, two vehicle, or three walking up the trails. Today, my favorite type of transportation, the foot car. Man, there's a ton of people out here today. It's almost like the entire city came out. Man. I can really feel that the athletic spirit here is out and alive. I can get out of the house, exercise, and sweat it out. Hello. You gotta remember when you come here, the weather is hot and muggy. You gotta be mentally and physically prepared. For me personally, no problem. I'm fit. It's so convenient. Who would imagine that way up in the mountain we'd have running water? It's crazy. It's almost like we're in my backyard. There's a patio. How you doing? People resting. Well, we don't need rest. Hey, guys. Hey, let's go to the top of the mountain. Yeah. Yeah, come with me. Get up. All right. Wait we'll a moment. We'll, yeah. We'll see you up there. Well, we're here at one of the peaks of the White Cloud Mountain. Here's a good place to check out the scenery in Guangzhou. We're at the square. Here you can rest, relax, play some sports, take some pictures, do what you want. But we're still not at the top mountain. We're going to Moxing Peak. Baiyun Mountain has always been one of the most famous scenic spots in Guangzhou. It's still known today as the first spectacular scene of Guangzhou. The total area of Bayun Mountain is about 28 square kilometers, consisting of 30 peaks. So if you're planning to hike up all the trails, be prepared to spend a couple days venturing around this broad green mountain. Oh. <laughs> Remember, keep our mountain clean and green. Whatever you bring with you, be sure to take back with you and throw all your trash in the garbage. And just for information, even though we're taking foot all the way up to the peak, if you want, you can take the very convenient electronic cart. This is great. Near the top of the mountain, we discover the red tree. Well, it's not actually red, but it's covered in red cloth. This type of tree is called a Xu Yuan Shu, which means a wish tree. If you want to make a special wish, you simply buy the red cloth, write your wish on it, and toss it up into the tree, and your wish will magically come true. What did I wish for? World peace, of course. Let's go. Whoa. To the top. 
よ。In making the final trek up to the top, it has to be on foot. In the spirit of sport, we've accomplished our mission and reached the summit. Here, it's 382 meters above sea level. Over here, you see the spectacular view of the capital of Guangdong, Guangzhou. Over the last couple of days, we've had a great experience. The opportunity to not only see the urban, but the natural environment and the rich domestic culture mixed into one. When you come here, you'll love the city for sure. For Travelog, I'm Chelsea. Enjoy the city.